with the NFL's trade deadline coming up, I just want to take some time to talk about whether the Colts should be buyers, sellers, inactive, right? I mean, generally, Chris Ballard, for the most part, pretty inactive at the trade deadline, I would say. But we know in the past he's given up first-round draft picks for guys. You know, DeForest Buckner traded, you know, what was his second and a third, but that second round pick ended up turning into a first round pick. You know what I mean? He's given away some first round picks before. So it wouldn't be the craziest thing for him to go make a move. The question would really become like, who would he really go get? How much would he really give up? You know, trying to rebuild this roster around Anthony Richardson. Now, how does he want to do that? So let's talk about scenarios real quick of what we could do if we're buyers at the deadline. Right. We've and we've talked about some of these guys. Right. We're talking about Jerry Judy. And I know at this point, a lot of people against bringing him in. And I understand that. Um, but we're also talking about Pastor Tain the second. So if he's a guy that were to come in, you know, there's some people that are for that. Some people that are against that. And, you know, I could understand it both ways. He's a really good football player. If he came here, he'd probably be, you know, that corner of the future that we're giving the big deals to and then trying to, you know, just continue to draft well on the other side, have Kenny in the slot. You know, at least for the time being, Juju would be on the other side whenever he comes back from his injury. And then I guess depending on, you know, how much the salary cap goes up and how much quarterbacks are making at that point, there might even be enough money to give, you know, Pat Sertain, Juju, and Kenny their money. Now, admittedly, saying all that, you know, that's a little bit of a dream world, right? That feels like more of, you know, yeah, I wish that would happen, but probably unrealistic. But, you know, it would be nice to have Pat Sertain, you know, if we go past that. I saw a tweet from Destin Adams earlier about Kair Elam, the cornerback for the Bills, who when he stepped in and played, he's been pretty good. But for them and with the depth that they have at corner and for the kind of defense that they play generally – he just hasn't been getting on the field. He's been a healthy scratch a few times this year. So he's a guy that could be a low price. You bring a guy like him in, low price. He could be a depth piece. And honestly, that's a move I would totally be down with. I'm somebody who thinks Kyrie Elam is a really good player. He's just got to continue to get on the field and get the reps. So if we were able to get him for a fairly low price, you know, you think what some players have gone for, you know, then you start thinking Kyrie Elam. Okay, what could we get him for? Probably a pretty good price, I would think. So, you know, he was somebody that I, when I saw that, I was like, yeah, that kind of intrigues me. I'd be down if we if we did something like that. And a couple of other guys that I'm, I'm curious how Colts fans feel about this. So you let me know down in the comment section. But, you know, Chase Young, Montez Sweat, those are a couple of guys that are on the market. You know, one of those guys I feel better about than the other. They both had their own separate injuries. So, you know, there's a little bit of history with the injuries there. I honestly am more comfortable with Montez Sweat. I don't know if that's an unpopular opinion or if a lot of people feel that way. Um, just over time, you look at the numbers, like outside of Chase Young's rookie year where he was defensive rookie of the year, like the numbers are pretty trash overall, even for the little amount of games he's played, right? You, like you think about the last couple of years for Chase Young, his second year in the league, played nine games, third year in the league, played three games. So far this year, he's played in six games. So overall, like he just, he's never going to play all the games. And even when he is able to be on the field, like the year that he played nine games, his second year in the league, he had one and a half sacks in nine games. Now, what I will say in his defense is that when you look at it this year in the six games that he's played in, he has five sacks altogether. So maybe this is Chase Young trying to show that, you know, he is still that guy. But until we see it consistently, you have to assume the price for him would have to be fairly low so that's why I think it's a discussion is because for a guy that had you know defensive rookie of the year in 2020 we're sitting here like okay could he be a guy that you're buying low on which is why I want to know what you guys think again I think Montez Sweat would be better which is why I think if they end up trading Montez Sweat they'll get more for him than they would for Chase Young but Montez Sweat again also just like Chase Young issues staying on the field throughout the time in the league so you know, his numbers aren't all there, but he's just one of those guys is like built like a freak, man. Kind of like Miles Garrett, just a slightly smaller Miles Garrett. And I, he, I think he's really good. I think he, again, is better than Chase Young. But at the end of the day, like for me, I wouldn't want to trade for either of those guys. 
I think as a pass rusher, I mean, Chase Young and, and Montez Sweat might give you more upside as pass rushers, but Quiddy Pay is really good in the run game, like really good in the run game. So having that along with him being a pass rusher, right, he doesn't always get home. He doesn't get home as much as Nick Bosa might, but he is usually the guy that's putting pressure on the quarterback, making the quarterback get off of his spot. And he's a guy that's really good at containing quarterbacks. He does his job from his side, and he has the athleticism to chase most of the quarterbacks down. So do we need to go and get somebody else? I don't think so. You know, And I don't know if we're going to pay Quiddy Pay, but I don't know. Are we going to pay either of those guys? Do we want to pay either of those guys over Quiddy Pay? I don't think so. So if it's not like a, a major upgrade at receiver, and that receiver's young, you know, 23, 24, 25 years old, or a cornerback, you know, high-end cornerback like Patrick Sertain, then I don't want it. And I don't even know if I would want Patrick Sertain at the price he's going for. Again, I like the option of a guy like Jalen Johnson or a guy like Kyir Elam. Then if we were to be sellers, what kind of guys do I think we'd sell off? And listen, I like a lot of the guys on this team. You know, this is my favorite team. like a lot of the guys. Um, where I'm going to start here is probably the one that's going to hurt the most, but it's the one that I keep seeing pop up and an option that is definitely realistic and something that I think might be able to fuel one of those trades if we were to trade for one of those guys from Washington. Washington needs linebackers, so if they wanted to get a linebacker and they went after Shaq Leonard, my question to you is what would you want back for Shaq Leonard? right what would you want back what would what would be realistic I think that's the question is what would be realistic with what he's making right they would have to take on his contract so with what he's making is anybody gonna want that that's really the biggest question in that situation because it looks I saw a report earlier today before I started recording this by the time you're seeing this it was actually yesterday but the report was about Shaq you know somebody did an interview with Shaq and he was talking about how he's ready to get back to his full workload, how he understands how the coaching staff, you know, has a plan for him to get back. But he said he's ready to get back to a full workload. And I think, you know, once once they unleash the maniac, I think that's when we'll see it. You know, we, we've we seen spurts of it. We've seen some good plays, but we've also seen, you know, some 2022 Shaq or 2021 Shaq, stuff that we've been seeing from the last couple of years. And so there's been a mixed bag. But I think at some point we're going to see that Shaq come back. And the question at this point, especially now that those comments are coming out, will the team feel inclined or will a different team feel inclined to be like, okay, if he's saying that, let's go ahead, bring him in, put him on the field right away and have him lead the defense. That's that's what's got me thinking about Shaq. You know, I hope not. Again, I've, I've said this many times on this channel. He's my current favorite Colts player I would like to see him stay on the team and get back to being the player that we all know and love him to be but with a guy that's getting closer and closer to 30 years old you have to think there's certainly a chance at any point they could decide to trade him you know other guys that could be traded I don't know how realistic any of this is but you know a guy like uh, Rodney Thomas right there are a lot of Colts fans that would rather keep Julian Blackman, rather pay Julian Blackman. So if he's going to stay and you're going to have Nick Cross on the team, then try to find somebody that will take Rodney Thomas from you for whatever you can get for him, right? And have Nick Cross, who came into the league as a free safety, have him play free safety, have Julian Blackman playing at the strong safety. And then I think a lot of us would be very comfortable with the back end of that secondary, right? Think about when when guys were healthy, Bob Sanders, Antoine Bethea, which Antoine Bethea was normally healthy. So it's mostly just when Bob Sanders was healthy and Bob and, and Antoine Bethea were both on the field together, they were shut down. They were one of the best defenses in the league, right? So again, I don't know how realistic it is. You know, it's not like I've heard any rumors of any of this stuff happening or anything. You know, this is more out of out of thin air type stuff. But Rodney Thomas, like it wouldn't surprise me if a move happened that involved Rodney Thomas. And outside of that, I don't really even know. Like, there are no receivers we currently have that you're gonna want to trade away, right? Like, because we're not punting on the season yet. We're at three and four. Good chance we beat the Saints. I think if depending on what happens in this next game, I think could decide 
whether we're buyers or sellers. If we win, I think there's a chance before Tuesday at 4 o'clock that the Colts could make a move for somebody. And if we lose to the Saints, I think there's a chance that by the time Tuesday 4 o'clock rolls around, there's one or two guys that have been traded from the Colts so if they can get draft compensation and try to build from the draft or try to have draft compensation leading up into next offseason and, and try to figure a move out at some point and have that extra draft compensation to be able to give up or, again, take it into the draft, continue to build, see what they can do, right? This team, as they continue to rebuild with a new coaching staff and getting Shane, his, all his new guys, right, and, and trying to rebuild it in his image. So we'll see what happens. Again, you let me know down in the comments section your opinion. Should we be buyers? Should we be sellers? Who should we buy on? Who should we sell away? You know, you let me know down below. And if you enjoy the content, please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and don't forget, turn those notifications on. We have videos every day on this channel, whether it's conversations like this or if it's Colts news that I'm trying to get to you guys as soon as I possibly can. Either way, make sure you get notified for it. And until next time, as always, take care of yourself, take care of each other, and go Colts.